Inspector T, how you doing? Where the fuck you been? Clocked it. Hey, what's going on everyone? So yep, Jason from Clocked It here and well, where have I been? It's certainly been a long time, isn't it? Eight months since I last made a video. Why haven't I made any videos? You know what? It's just mentally I've just not been in the game at the moment. I've I've when I'm like this, I retreat back into what I feel comfortable with. And that has been just playing games, spending time with a family when I can and just not trying to overthink everything. And sometimes that you know can actually stop you from being creative and enjoying other things, especially when my mindset you know deteriorates quite a bit over the last few months, you know, which which it has. But today I am in the mood to make a video and I thought to myself, if I don't make any videos now, especially when I have a day off like today, um, then when will I ever make a video again? And I do love making YouTube videos i just got to get into the right mindset be in the right frame of mind and just get on with it so i thought what i'll do just to, just to get back in is just make a video based off what i've been doing you know pretty much which sometimes are just going back to playing those old games which i just love and what i call my evergreen titles now as i always say i've played a lot of games i've got a lot of games and i can't list every single evergreen type of title that i love on you but when i say evergreen these are the games that i just bounce onto play when i feel like i'm have kind of a quick blast they feel great and i just comforting overall no matter what platform i'm playing on so without any further ado let's get into it So as always, when I retreat back, I jump back into that nostalgia factor. And one game I used to love when growing up as a kid was Shadow Warriors, which uh, around the world now is called Ninja Gaiden. But back then in the UK, it was called Shadow Warriors. This is the Game Boy version. I grew up playing this game. I absolutely love it. And I can complete it in just a single half hour, 45 minutes sitting. It's just one of those quick blast games just, I think it's five levels, that's all it is, and it's just great fun. I actually prefer this game over the NES version of Shadow Warriors, which are, these are two completely different games, and I absolutely loved that about the original Game Boy, where you had this hardware that couldn't do what other platforms were doing, you know, like the NES and all that stuff, so it had to have its own thing, and Shadow Warriors on a Game Boy is one of my go-to games all day, every day. And stick with the Game Boy. Another game I always go back to is Super Mario Land on a Game Boy. I, I mean, this is just peak nostalgia for me. Super Mario Land, you can just pick up and play. It's just bam, bam, bam. You're just in there. The levels are really quick. I remember all the secrets and stuff. It's just, just the music, just, just the platforming, just the level design. Just, uh, it's just quick pick up and play perfection to me. One of my favorite Mario games ever. Another Game Boy classic here is Kirby's Dreamland. Ah, you know, just just another game, just. It's just man, Kirby's Dreamland. Once again, childhood game. Absolutely love this game to death, and probably nostalgia-wise, it is 100%. I say probably. <laughs> I did say 100%. It is 100% my favorite. Kirby game, nostalgia wise. Can't get enough of it. Play it whenever, it just puts a smile on your face. This is the Game Boy. Game Boy is perfect for games like this. Jumping off the Game Boy now, we go into what is, I, I feel, one of the greatest games ever made from so many angles. I, I, I can't sing Res enough praise. Res, once again, five levels, jump in, pick any level you want. The soundtrack to this game is absolutely 
um, just on another level. It is peak video game soundtrack to me. And Rez I own on the Dreamcast. I got the PS2 version, which I, I didn't like. It was, it was a weaker version to the Dreamcast version, but I also got it on the Xbox 360 and I got it on the PS4 as digital downloads. Just, uh, just, just too good. And over the years, I've always just jumped back onto Rez. Stage four, probably more than anything else. I just love to beat the stage four. Um, but just overall, Res is to me perfection, and I can play it whatever mood I'm in. One thing I haven't done, um, probably on social media or on this channel or whatever, is sing the DS, the Nintendo DS, enough praise. It is without a doubt one of my favorite handouts ever. And out of all the games I love on this system, Meteos is, <laughs> believe it or not, this is actually from Tetsuya Mitsugushi, who actually done the music soundtrack to Rez as well. He was back here to do um, Meteos. And it's just a puzzle game, one of my favorite puzzle games ever. Once again, you just, just quick pick up and play. Um, all the planets got different types of gravities which affect each one that you play and how you actually try to shoot the meteors back up into space and destroy the other competing planets. But it's just so refreshing and so pick up and play to, you know, just, just to get into. Another evergreen title for me that I have just played countlessly across the years. One genre I always big up are shooters. I absolutely love shooters, played them all my life, whereas from originally in the arcades, going the NES and the SNES, the Mega Drive, whatever, just cycling through the generations. Um, the Sega Saturn just had some absolutely staggering, staggering shooters. And layer section, um, I've, I've spoke about this game before, it's one of my favorite shooter maps. It's just, ah. Uh, the Saturn version as well, you can put in Tate mode. It actually mimics the arcade so well. It's just absolutely phenomenal game with a soundtrack that just blows your mind away. But to, to me, this is peak, almost vertical shooter in terms of the stages. It's just non-stop, there is no loading. You just keep on going. It's just mwah, people, mwah. And of course, there's Radiant Silver Gun on the Sega Saturn as well. Uh, whenever I, I, I bring my shooters downstairs to play my Saturn, I'm bringing layer section. I'm bringing ra ra playing Radiant Silver Gun. They are just... Silver Gun is... <sighs> is it my favorite shooter ever? Oh, it's so close, people. I, I've played so many, but it is so close. So close, because this game is just treasure perfection. The soundtrack the graphics, the final boss is almost something, even though it became came before Res, that type of running man, oh, just people, this game, it's been re-released on the um, on the Switch now in physical form and, and digital form, if you haven't played it, download it, pick it up, perfection people. Another all-time classic shooter for me on the PlayStation 1 is R-Type Delta. Massive R-Type fan. Um, you know, going back to the, the, the original arcade version. I played on the Game Boy, that's the SNES, but R-Type Delta, Delta out of all the games, R-Type games that I've played, R-Type Delta is, to me, one of the best side-scrolling shooters ever. And easily, in my opinion, easily the best R-Type game out of all the R-Type games I've played. And I've played most of them. I've played most of them out of all the R-Type games. I just, this, 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 this game, you have to be meticulous and you have to know the levels in order to get through it because it will kick your ass. But it is so pick up and play friendly and, and easier than other R-Types. I just, I just keep coming back to it. Keep coming back to it ever since I got on the PS1. Just keep coming back to it. Another Saturn game here, Nice Into Dreams. 
you know, what can I say? I've talked about Nice Into Dreams before. One day I'll do a dedicated video on it, but in terms of nostalgia, in terms of peak Sega Saturn, just Nights is just comfort. Comfort in a Sega Saturn bubble that I'll just, I'll never feel uncomfortable playing, never feel uncomfortable booting up, and I play it oh, just so much, just off and on. And the beauty, beautiful thing about Nights as well, once you complete the game, you can easily decide what level you want to go to, and they're all just joyful levels from the soundtrack and everything just absolutely joyful and obviously it's a score, a score attack game i think you'll find with a lot of the evergreen games that i play they are very arcadey in nature those just those pick up and play quick blast games you know where it's just a single level whatever they're just quick blast games and that's what i find the most evergreen to me and nice into dreams is just yeah man and like i said every christmas i'm always playing christmas into nice as well just just nostalgia people Another PS1 classic to me, Vib Ribbon. Um, you know, that, that Sony Japanese studio who Sony closed down, those absolute pig dogs. But Vib Ribbon, man, I used to put in my own CD to it with my Jago CDs, you know, whatever, RB Hip Hop CD to try and remix it. <laughs> Didn't always quite work. Uh, but just the original soundtrack, the Vib Ribbon as well, is just J pop. Oh, just J pop. Goodness, people. And once again, just those single levels, you can just pick up and play it. It's just. I, the funny thing is, this, this actually comes with like this a little map of the controls in case you forget. Um, but I play this game so much, I do actually remember them. You know, just for the type of obstacles, whether you're just pressing down or R1 or L1, whatever to do, go over a particular type of object. I just, I just, I just remember them, and I just, I could just play Vib Ribbon whenever, and it just brings a smile to my face. Once again, just bang it in, quick level, you're done, and it just feels good. My favorite PS1 shooter, you know, with, with a question that I've played, Einhander. As I said in a previous video, I have not completed this game to this day, and I have to. I've got to do it one day, but that does not stop me whatsoever in absolutely loving this game and playing it. Ugh. Yeah, I, it's easily my most played uh, PS1 shooter, easily, even over Delta, easily. Um, just Iron Hand, just from Square, from back in the day, Square Soft, Square Enix now, as, as we know, don't need to say it all the time, but just graphically, the music, the, 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 the shooting, the weapons, just a, oh, just, yeah man, Iron Hand, just a bomb diggity. I've spoken about Buster Groove before. Once again, just the soundtrack to this game is just one of my favorite gaming soundtracks ever. Pure originality. The animation on the characters is just still to this day so lifelike and so perfect. Just just Enix absolutely nailed it with this game. I, I got the sequel. I love the sequel, but this was the first one I played and just everything about it is just as I said before, Shorty and the Easy Mouse, my favourite soundtrack in, in, in the game, you know, by far. But just bust a groove. Ah, just just evergreen. Absolute evergreen, people. One of my favourite rhythm games ever. You know, with, with, without a doubt, it's just just easily one of my favourites ever. I'll, I'll, I'll never, ever stop having enough of this game. Ridge Racer Type 4 is one of my favorite racing games ever. I mean, I've done a whole damn video on this game, just about a soundtrack alone. Um, but Type 4 straddles the line between arcade and not sim, but more console, if that makes sense. A console racer that, um, that you wouldn't really put into the arcade because it wouldn't in some respects function as, as as an arcade game quick quick pick up and play type type of game but still 
it has enough pick up and play about it because once like i said once once you um you, once you play the game you got all the championships you got the time trials whatever you want to do you can just blast them on the level play your favorite um soundtrack to that level that that, that you want to play for its karaoke type box and just just graphically just just color palette wise just control wise ah oh, man my favorite racing game on a on the ps1 without a doubt just yeah Ridge of Racer Type 4, I, I've said before, it is, a, is the best racer game on the PS1, and I, I'll still say it to this day. And then we have Tetris. Now, like I said, I've shown my original Game Boy version of Tetris before. Love the original game. Tetris DS, I played as, uh, you know, I got a DS as well. Another DS game, absolutely immaculate people. But my, my most go-to is the new Tetris on the N64. Um, just the soundtrack to this game. Once again, the, the graphics, the art style of it. Um, just being able to like make those type of blocks where you can go gold and silver if you can make like a perfect square and stuff to get the extra points. Uh, just, uh, this game, I, I, can't, I can't describe how many hours I've put into it over the years. I just, I just can't describe because it's just one of my easily most evergreen games. And with the N64, the cartridge goes in, bang, and you're playing Tetris straight away. Perfect. And then we have fundamentally both Lilac Wars and Star Wing as evergreen games to me um, that I do play on quite a regular basis. Um, you know, I've also got them you know, on... on um, on the Switch and on the Wii U as well, and you know whatever digital other formats I got. Um, but you know what? Primarily, I do play Star Wing the most. It is my favorite Star Fox game. And the original Star Wing, I think it's just it's it's the soundtrack. I love the art style. I know people will look at the graphics now and think, and and the frame rate, and think, oh my god. Um, but it's just got such an evergreen look and sound and playability to the original Star Wing. And I can just fire it up. Just that original Corneria soundtrack, man. Oh, man. Just, <laughs> just, just perfection, people. Absolute perfection. I, I, I love Star Wing and Lilac Wars to the end of my days. And then, of course, you got F Zero. In terms of futuristic racers, I return to hardly any other more regularly than F Zero. Um, funnily enough, F Zero GX is my personal favorite um, F Zero game. Then F Zero X on the N64, and lastly, F Zero on the SNES. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just I'm ignoring the Game Boy games just just for a moment, but I, I do like the Game Boy games. Um, but funnily enough, the one I actually return to the most just for that quick blast on, more regularly, is the original SNES F-Zero. Um, just once again, it's just that quick blast pickup nature. Um, I, you know, just, just, there's something about the original F-Zero, just, just that Mode 7, I think. It's just, I, I'm, 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 I'm a sucker for Mode 7. Absolute sucker for Mode 7. And, and no matter how perfect F-Zero GX is, I, I consider um, the SNES of Zero to be perfect as well, just just the perfect SNES game, and I just I'll return to it more regularly than, than anything else. I feel. And as I might have said before, Sonic the Hedgehog Two is easily my favorite Sonic game. Um, I I play Sonic the Hedgehog Two more regularly than. I think many people might might realize I, I I own it digitally on multiple platforms. Obviously, I got the original Mega Drive version when this came out. When when this game came out, when you look at that artwork, people, and unless you were there, you don't understand how pivotal and and, and how monumental this this artwork was for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Whether you had it on a poster, whether you were first seeing it, it's just one of those pieces of artwork that you just I look at. And it just, it almost gives me goosebumps. But Sonic 2, I think, is Sonic perfection. Just level design, just the levels, the the, the music, the, the, the gameplay, 
just just when he introduced the um the, the spin dash was just uh, such, such a fundamental um a monumental gameplay addition i don't think people right realize how important uh and how amazing that was at the time but and and obviously the the, the pseudo 3d bonus level uh which is still one of my favorite pseudo 3d effects of of that year i just it was, that was just 3d to me just absolutely loved it but sonic 2 i i just once again pick up and play man it's just just evergreen to me and it always will be one of my one of my favorite games ever One series I don't talk about enough, and I, and I mean enough, and I can't I can describe how important this, this series is to me, is the Echo the Dolphin series. Um, now, I was there when the original Echo the Dolphin came out on a Mega Drive, and it just blew my mind, just graphically, just, just audio-wise, um, just, just the art style. The gameplay was so fresh and new now you, you might look at echo the dolphin as maybe not so much a pick up a play game but it really it really is i can just jump into any any level i feel like with the password system or whatever save slots i got and one of my favorite levels is quite early on is the vents and and the vents is uh, almost tropical you have to swim against the current to go deep down save some other dolphins and stuff to bring them back to, to their mother who's waiting up closer to the surface um, but just our music, just the level, but just Echo overall, especially the original game for me. Um, I do love uh, Tides of Time and Defender of the Future, just the soundtrack to that as well, and just the ground, oh man. Um, but the original Echo for me, I, I got it on the 3DS as well. Um, just, I just, I just, I play it loads. Just quickly pick up and play it, and I think it is Mega Drive greatness. And I don't care what anyone says about this game, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. No matter how difficult it might be, um, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> Saturn's being brought up quite a lot on here at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> um, but the Sega Rally Championship, um, when it came to that era of, of racing games, um, Sega Rally Championship... For the Saturn was, I've said before my Sega Saturn games, it is our crown jewel of racing games. Um, arguably um, the best racing game of that um, generation, even though you, you, you've, you've got some greats up there. Like I said, you've got, you got the Type 4s, you've got the Wave Race 64s, you've got, you got the F-Zeros. There's, there's so many great racing games out during that generation of the PS1, Saturn and, and N64. Um, but Sega Rally is technically um, almost perfection. It's, it's, I say almost, it, it pretty much for the Saturn is it's, it's perfection. And you, if you want to get good times on this game, you need to know every single inch and bump and corner of those tracks. And that's where the magic of Sega arcade games come through. There's this level of control and mastery that Sega just perfected and the Saturn version of Sega Rally is just perfection in that way and I've returned to it countlessly over the years and I've, I've had a bit of resurgence of it because I follow some people on Twitter as well who are huge Sega Rally fans and that's helped me just jump back on it again and just and just pick up my skills again and just yeah Sega Rally man oh, what can I what more can I say Streets of Rage 1 and 2. Streets of Rage 2 is, is my favourite. There's elements of Streets of Rage 1 that I prefer over Streets of Rage 2. But just overall, Streets of Rage 2 is arguably the best side scroll beat beat 'em up ever made. I, I I think it might be for me. The best side scroll beat 'em up ever made. And what I mean, what competition is there? You got you got Turtles in Time, you got Guardian Heroes, you know, you, you got you got the final fights. Um, obviously the latest um, you know, some some games. But, but Streets of Rage 2, man, just yeah, um, just use Ocasio's soundtrack on this game. Just just elevates it up there into the stratosphere, and just Streets of Rage once again. You could just just no matter what level you want, you want to, you want to play because it's on digital now. You can you can save those levels if you want in a save state and just jump onto them. And it's it's just 
mega power. Oh, which she actually learned recently is ground upper, which uh, just blew my mind for Yuzo because she really actually uh, tweeted that. But um, yeah, Streets of Rage 2, I will always return to. I same with Streets of Rage 1, and I got them on a 3DS as well, and obviously on Switch Online and stuff like that now, but yeah, amazing. And this would not be one of my evergreen videos without arguably my most evergreen games, which are the original Outrun and Outrun 2. Um, I, I grew up playing the original Outrun in the arcades and just, I think that's just, in terms of video games, if I if I had to put video games in front of people, you know, to say, um, you know, just, 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 just in, to bring that joy the Outrun games, especially from you know from that from those eras, are just ugh. Um, to me, Outrun Two is the greatest arcade racing game ever made. Um, I, I I I can't see many arguments. You you've got Sega Rally, of course. You got Daytona One and Two, Sega Rally Two. You know, of course. Um, I I struggle to put like F Zero GX up in there because purely just because of difficulty, not because of anything else but just because of difficulty but in terms of just jumping on quick play fun there's there's not there's nothing really else i come close to the outrun experience in terms of in terms of racing games it's um outrun 2 is peak arcade racing perfection and if you want to understand what an arcade game is just look at outrun 2 just yeah incredible Um, two other shooters I grew up absolutely loving. I used to have the compilation on the um, PlayStation One, which I I don't anymore unless I unless I can I can find it for this video. I'm sure I don't have it anymore. Um, but I downloaded them on the Nintendo Switch. Um, Strikers 1945 and uh, uh, Strikers 1945 too. Just um, yeah, man. Uh, you know, Psycho are just one of my favorite developers of shooters. I, I think they are borderline on perfection when it comes to shooters and a, and a striker series if you've ever seen me on a switch you see these games get, get booted up that's me just having a quick blast on some of the levels and just um difficulty wise my god it, it ramps up and you know luckily there's a difficulty scaler you know if you just want a, a relaxing time um but these games just the way they look visually the, the, the music um in terms of a vertical shooter that's the type of powered ups and just uh, the way everything looks it's just uh, just yeah brilliant absolutely brilliant Another solid go-to for me is uh, Wave Race 64 and Blue Storm. I probably play uh, 64 more than Blue Storm, um, but I'm actually one of those advocates for how great Blue Storm is as a, as a racer. Sure, it's a little more twitchy and not as tightly refined as Wave Race 64 and doesn't have that EAD your magic as I, as I mentioned before, which is probably why I, I, I gravitate more towards um, Wave Race 64, which is just racing uh, perfection on the N64. Um, easily one of the best uh, racing games Nintendo has um, ever made in-house, and it's just, oh, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just magical, man. But Blue Storm, some of those levels with the crashing waves and everything, where you mix up the um, the weather cycle and everything, or just having nice and calm, um, just visually, oh my god, there's, there's still to this day, in my opinion, no other w racing game uh, with wave effects like. Um, the original uh, wave race when it comes to actually racing on them and as an actual racer just nothing else comes close in my opinion um, but yeah I, j I jump on these games all the time and got on the you know the Wii U and stuff like that as well and the Switch obviously is on now uh, which makes life a bit easier for jumping on it but just that N64 control uh, analog stick people for the original wave race 64 nothing else comes close like I, I struggle to play it on other platforms so I always generally return to um, the N64 version And last but certainly not least, um, I was I was 
almost tempted not to put this one on there because admittedly I have I haven't actually played it for a while. But Street Fighter Alpha 3, as I said before, is my personal favorite fighting game ever. Um, I have a group of friends. I'm, I'm going to try and get them on, on, on a video one point because Alpha 3, in terms of what it means to, to me and what it means to uh, my friends as well as, as, as a group, we played it for absolutely years, got countless stories about it. But I think the Alpha series is just... Um, you know, very uh, is it's probably um, just just peak Street Fighter for me um, in terms of control, hitboxes, characters, moves, um, stages, and just specials. You know, supers and just ugh. yeah, Alpha Free. Um, I, I I bought um, it on a Sega Saturn. You know, way back in the early two thousands is one of the reasons why I bought my Japanese Sega Saturn back then. Um, and I do play the Saturn version. The most, I, I just that Saturn D pad is just absolutely staggering uh, for, for for 2D fighters, absolutely staggering. Um, but the version I actually played the most competitively with my friends and stuff was the PS1 version, um, and and also the Dreamcast version. But personally, for me in my own time, the Saturn version is our go-to version. As I mentioned before, it's it's it's, it's crazy expensive now. Um, if you want the Saturn version, it offer free, unless you're some real hardcore Saturn collector who's got to have the physical. Um, just, just emulate it or just play a different version of Alpha 3. There's, there's plenty of other great versions of Alpha 3 out there. Um, but yeah, the Saturn version is, is my go-to. And that's it, people. Those are um, a, 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 a bunch of my probably most played evergreen titles. Um, I, I, I could have listed so many more because there's still like a, a ton more, especially like the NES and SNES era and the Mega Drive era and stuff that, that I just jumped back onto. Um, but I'm sure this video is going to be long enough. Um, in terms of future content, I'm going to um, not make any promises in terms of um, when I release videos because I feel like I always break those promises even though I don't mean to break those promises um, I'm just I'm just gonna try and just do it when I'm in the mood you know to, to just just make a video no matter what the video is no matter how short how long how, how in-depth I'm just going to try and do it and you know I, I you know I, I, I know I got subscribers and I, I, I appreciate every single one of you who like to hear my opinions just generally about the industry or about older games or just modern games and stuff um, and I will keep trying to to bring it and hopefully my, my brain um, settles down to give me these moments to make videos that I do enjoy and just talk about things you know again so yeah as always you know thanks for listening Please, please let me know um, your most evergreen games in the comment section below. As always, with my videos, I will reply to every single one of you who comments. I appreciate all your time, all your comments. Take care at all and peace.